Carnival of Soul is a cult classic directed by Herc Harvey from 1962. It didn't gather enough attention at its release back then, but over time it has been critically acclaimed as one of the horror cult classics. The film begins with a car race scene in which a car with three women are pushed out into a lake. After a lengthy research, one of the victims emerges from the lake when everyone thought they all died. As the story goes on, she feels out of touch with reality and leaves Kansas to search for an existential meaning of life in Utah as a church organist. Mary Henry is a young woman living alone and working as a church organist played by Candice Hillicos. She gets a call from another church in Utah to be the lead organist and decides to re-establish her life in another city as a fresh beginning right after the accident. Having gone through such a tragic and traumatic car accident, a zombie-like ghoulish man appears in her visions when she is driving alone at night to Utah. Although aimlessly wandering hitchhiker's story is a staple of horror classics, the director of Carnival of Souls retells such a widely known story from a surrealistic perspective. The motionless reoccurring man is an unsettling figure referencing the mental state of Mary. She even seeks the help of a psychologist after stumbling upon him, but the psychologist doesn't provide her with any satisfying answers. The man appearing out of the blue doesn't even cause any harm other than simply staring deeply into Mary's soul the entire film. Hence the screen becomes an exterior window from which we can look at someone else's experiences, just like zombie-like figures dancing through the night in Carnival of Souls. Does she have visions from the afterlife? This is the beginning of her psychological breakdowns later in the film. In Utah, she rents a room in a building where another man also lives in the other room. Is a misogynistic character, John Linden, hitting on her at every chance he gets and slowly pushes her to like him in a disturbing way. This is going to be one of the signals for Mary's tumultuous storyline. When the two first meet, his demeanor resembles a peeping Tom, peeking at her while she puts on a robe after their first meet. After pushing her several times, Mary accepts to go out with him because she fears to be alone having her vision of the creepy dead man. He begins to drink and acts like a total pervert, gaslighting her to the maximum. His presence adds another layer to the already unsettling plot. As a minimal gothic horror, the film's most notable element is its Utah settings. The next storyline element is when Mary is beckoned to go to the abandoned amusement park right outside of Utah Center. In real life, it is called Salt Air and is located near the Great Salt Lake in Utah. You can also see it in some paranormal investigation stories, such as ghost adventures. The place, as seen in the film, has a haunting history. It burned before this film was shot and burned once again afterwards. So you can see how the film's location is connected to the real life, like Mary's hallucinatory situation. Her psyche is torn between the reality, societal expectations and her subconsciousness. The superego becomes interrupted by the it, resulting in Mary's impulsive behavioral structure at the Utah church. The priest of the church retells the story of the abandoned amusement park that it used to be an active place for people visiting to stay, but now it is collecting dust and became a pinnacle of human decay as a landscape landmark. There is something eerie about amusement parks, especially the ones we can see in daylight, the air is dense, the human-made buildings being eaten by nature over time, it weighs upon us like the burden we must carry on this earth. Mary feels the same way. Something calls to her from the deepest corners of this carnival, maybe the leftover energies it contains or something she needs to overcome in order to save her life. Similar to now deteriorating amusement park, Mary is in a comatose state waiting to be activated. When she finds the meaning of life she is looking out for, the third evolvement involves Mary's psychological state. It is hinted that she might be dealing with schizophrenia, depression, PTSD and some other psychological distress we might not know about. As a classic horror film, Carnival of Souls digs deeper into the distressed main character Mary's psychological state.
nothing seems to be in order for her life after the car accident she experienced and as a young woman living alone. The film criticizes the stigma around independent women at the time of when this film was made. Thanks to the eerie organ music Mary plays, as if she is filming her own story in front of our eyes. This might be the soundtrack in Mary's head. Where this perspective shines is in the Church of Utah and she goes into a sleepwalking trance and begins playing an atonal, gothic-like, surrealistic melody and the man that appears out of nowhere comes in but this time the two connects their hands together while they play the organ. Let's now look at how influential this film has become in cinema. For my personal take, Carnival of Souls is one of the most well-executed psychological horror films I've ever encountered. The psychological issues a character might be experiencing are not mocked like in the later films on mental health issues. What's so fascinating in this film is the film's low-budget aesthetic. There was no major studio backing up this film and it begins in medias res. Look at the first shot of the film and you'll understand what I mean. It begins out of nowhere, confirming the power of visualistic realm cinema creates. It opens as a window into the another surrealistic realm without alerting us, which will be used in every section of the film. We'll follow Mary as she goes through a couple of inexplicable situations to her demise. Each and every one of the shots produce outstanding and haunting silhouettes and the carnival's location act as the source of these unrealistic hauntings Mary is subjected to. Later on we get to learn why the man keeps stalking her. It is the fact that Mary is part of the other world keeps appearing in the frame but most of the people don't get to see or hear. This film marks the line between 1950s and 1960s. The American society was beginning to question sexuality, psychedelics, mental health disorders, espionage and paranoia at the beginning of the 1960s. Carnival of Souls deal with these cultural and historical questions people have asked during that time. Herc Harvey was also inspired by Twilight Zone's 16 episode The Hitchhiker and Psycho's driving at night scene without a doubt as there are hits here and there both visually and in its narration to the horror classics. The other reason why this is such an important film is that this is one of the first independent zombie horror films ever made and its influences can be seen in other films such as Night on the Living Dead, The Shining, Lost Highway. So in a way Carnival of Souls walked so George Romero and David Lynch could run. Candice Hillegos embodies Mary as best as she can with her glossy outlook, mood swings and stunning silhouette. For these hints and references, Carnival of Souls is an influential proto-feminist film that was way ahead of his time. She recognizes how other people objectify her as an alluring woman, but she deliberately chooses not to be the part of that society time and time again. While the both of the priests in Utah and Kansas are resilient towards an independent woman, they still cannot do anything about it because Mary is a stern organ player without flinching at the questions of other characters in society. If I could describe Carnival of Souls in one sentence, I think it would be this. Carnival of Souls is an obscure, low-budget, crispy black and white film that doesn't rely on anything extravagant to manipulate its viewers but rather invites the audience into it the festivities of the ghost-like figures inside the mind of a nightmare-filled woman. When I first watched the film, it was actually because of Chilling Adventures of Sabrina. Before that, Carnival of Souls kept catching my eye once in a while, but I had a lot of movies to see before I could commit myself to this haunting piece. But I decided to give it a shot at the film's reference in Chilling Adventures of Sabrina TV series. And in the end, it stole my soul kept luring me into it just like the protagonist Mary goes through an existential crisis in her own purgatory. The entire viewing experience was a dreamlike sequence I didn't know I wanted to get into and by the time it ended I wanted to get back into it a couple of times more. What did you think of Carnival of Souls? Let me know your thoughts down below and if you haven't seen it yet 
this is the sign for you to go ahead and experience Carnival of Souls like I did. Thank you for watching and see you next time.